quail's knitting nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. Today I have a special treat for you, a special edition where we're going to dye yarn with avocado pits. So come on, let's go. I have here my avocados which have been in the freezer. I've been saving them for about six or eight months and I'm going to weigh them and see how much I have. Okay, wow, it looks like I'm up to two and a half pounds. Perfect. Avocado pits in the dye pot. Some of them I cut in half or even in quarters depending on how big the pit was and then some of them are whole pits. I filled the dye pot about three quarters of the way full with tap water and I set the heat to seven or about medium high. You can see the water at this time is clear. After it started steaming I turned it down a little bit so that it wouldn't boil. I want it to simmer but not boil because that can spoil the color. After one hour it's at a very low simmer and it's become quite murky. Let's see what color it is now. So now it's kind of well, it's showing up as yellow on camera, but in reality, it's kind of a light brownish, pinkish, uh, peach color. So I'm going to try and make this a little bit more pink by adding some baking soda. I added a whole cup of baking soda and it has now been simmering here for two hours. It's gotten much darker. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah. So on camera it looks orangey. Orange red I would say. And in real life it's a little bit more pink, so the camera's pulling out more yellow. But it looks, in real life, it looks pinky, like peachy apricot color. Much darker and more pink than it was before the baking soda. So, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to turn, it's been on two here for the past like half hour or so just at a nice little simmer. Well, I'm going to turn this off, let it cool to room temperature, and come back to it tomorrow. Good morning. Joy here with some more dyeing. So this is my yarn, Red Rope Farm Tunis Wool Fingering, 100%. <clears throat> it's regular yarn, it's not super wash. <clears throat> from a local farm. It's already tied off in three spaces along the skein. So I'm taking it right out of the wrapper and I'm putting it straight into my bucket here. I have eight skeins. However, I've decided I'm only going to do seven. That way I'll have one skein to compare after the dye. And if I decide I want to do a little bit of color work, I'll have one skein of natural left to work with. So that's three skeins. I don't think all my skeins are going to fit in here. Okay. I switched out my buckets. I have a bigger bucket now, and I put seven skeins in here. That's how much room they take up. And now I'm going to fill this bucket with... Room temperature, lukewarm water. And I'm going to let the yarn sit for about 
30 minutes or until I'm ready with the other dye pot because the yarn needs to soak up water before I put it in the dye pot. So I moved the bucket with the yarn over there and it is waiting. I have my dye pot here and I'm gonna take a look. So it boiled or didn't boil, it simmered for two hours yesterday. I let it cool overnight and this is what it looks like today. Actually, that's quite, it's almost blood red, which is much darker than it was even after the two hours of simmering. So leaving it overnight definitely made a difference. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain out the big pieces of the avocado. Hopefully I won't get it all over the kitchen. It smells kind of like cooked tree bark. It's interesting. All right, so there's a little bit left in my pot. I'm gonna clean out the pot and I'm gonna put this into my compost. Okay, now I've cleaned out my dye pot. I'm ready, I'm going to filter it one more time. The first filter got out all the, the big pits and uh, the skin that came flaked off the pits. And now I'm gonna filter out the small stuff through a coffee filter. Look how red that is, that's beautiful. All right, here we go. So the coffee filter was, it clogged up fast and it was just dripping through there. It was taking forever and I'm too impatient. So I switched it out for a piece of cotton fabric, which seems to be going much faster. Yeah, hear that? It's just running right through. Whereas with the coffee filter, it was like drip, drip, drip. So hopefully this will be faster. On to the next stage. So I filtered all of my dye. I had to change out my uh, cotton cloth again because that one, the first one that I used also clogged up like the coffee filter did, although not as fast. And I just wanted to show you, it came out, this is, it was a white cloth to start with and it came out kind of a dusty pink color. Uh, now this is one of my usual rags, so I'll throw it in the wash and see if it's color fast or not. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is my yarn has soaked for quite a while now, plenty of time. So I'm gonna take out a skein and I'm gonna squeeze out as much water as I can. And then transfer it to the dye pot. There it goes. Oh, and one thing before we start, I also wanted to show just the color of the water again. Before we get started, it's kind of a deep, almost blood red color. Showing up pretty well on camera, I think. All right, some more yarn. So we'll squeeze the water out. And then transfer it to the dye pot. So I'll do that for all seven skeins. Okay, all my yarn is in the dye pot. And actually, the, the water from the the yarn just 
soaking is like gross. <laughs> it's very gray and murky and filthy. So yeah, here's for washing the farmyard before you use it. Anyway, for the dye pot, I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to start like I did yesterday. I'm going to start it on medium high and bring it up to a simmer. And I'm going to let it simmer for about an hour. I decided to bring this up to a bare simmer more slowly than I did the pits. Because this is wool, I didn't want to stir it. And I also didn't want it to burn on the bottom. I'm not sure if that's a thing, but I thought I'd just... I decided to err on the side of caution. This is Tunis wool. I have no idea if it felts or not, but I want to not have it felt in case it does. So it's been, as soon as it started steaming, I turned the heat down, and it's been at this really super low simmer for an hour. You can see there's still a lot of dye in the water. And you can also see that the yarn is definitely turned a pinkish, like a dusty gray pink color. So now I'm going to turn this off, let it cool to room temperature, and sit overnight. Good morning again. Another day has passed. Yesterday I had my yarn in the dye pot. I let it heat at not even quite a simmer for about an hour. Then I let it cool off right in the pot on the stove and I just left it overnight. Now I am going to rinse it. So what I'm going to do is pull the yarn out of the pot, squeeze it, put it into fresh water, fresh clean water, and let it sit for about 15 minutes. definitely pink. I moved all of the yarn from the dye pot into the rinse pot and I thought I'd take a look at the color. So in the dye pot it's still almost just as red as even before I put the yarn in. And then you can tell my rinse pot already is turning pink. The water in the rinse pot is about the same color as the yarn itself. So, I have heard that superwash yarn takes dye a lot better than just regular farm yarn. Unsuperwashed. So if it had been superwashed, it might have come out much darker red. Also, there's a ton of unused dye in this pot. So I had a lot more avocado pits than I needed for my yarn. It's possible also because of its tunis wool as opposed to some other kind of wool that it takes dye differently than say for example merino. I don't know. This is my first try with it and I have no experience. So I'm going to let this soak for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to squeeze the water out of this and let it hang to dry. Here I am in my basement. I hung the yarn on the drying rack. I positioned the rack over the drain so that all the water, all the dye that's dripping off the skeins will go right down into the drain. As you can see, they're kind of a pale pink color. And I don't think you can see it on camera, but some of the skeins have a little bit of variation like you get when you kettle dye. So that'll be interesting to see once it's dry and I have it up in the natural light, what they look like. 
Now the dye pot, after sitting, no, this is not the dye pot, this is the rinse pot. After sitting for 15 minutes, when I first put it in there, it was a pale pink color, but now after 15 minutes, it's gotten quite dark. So a lot of dye came out while the skeins were rinsing. All right, I expect this will take hmm, maybe three days to dry. We'll see. I'm back. I'm here with all of my dyed yarn. So I have seven skeins. Plus the one undyed one. So that I can compare and then also use to knit with. So on the camera it looks like a very, very pale almost pink, kind of grayish on camera. But in reality, it is definitely like what I would call a dusty rose or a dusty pink, pale pink. Can't really see it. Uh, so some of them have a little bit of variegation, but if you notice in this skein, you can see how this piece here is darker. It's also on this side here. See, there's a little darker piece here and then tucked in there. So two of the skeins have this darker streak in them. And I think what happens there, this one has a little bit too. It's a little bit in there and then a little bit up here. They're the only two skeins that have that real dark streak to them. And what I think is that these were the two that were on the bottom of the dye pot. So when I put the yarn in the dye pot and then heated it up to a simmer, those were spots that were right on the bottom. And I think that's what happened, almost like burning, but not quite. And when I went to clean the dye pot afterwards, there were a couple of spots on the bottom of the pan that took extra scrubbing, like some had it adhered to the stainless steel. So I think that's what happened there. The rest of them, it's, it's a very subtle, subtle variation in the colors. You can't really tell. Although I'm sure once you knit it up, like for example, this sweater, you can see uh, the differences in the variegations. So it turned out more pink. I was hoping for something a little bit more salmony colored, but I'm happy with how it turned out. And my daughter was home for Christmas and she loves this color. She, in fact, was wearing another store bought sweater in this exact shade while she was here. So, what we've decided to do is she's going to pick out a sweater pattern and I will knit it for her in this yarn. So I'm happy with my experiment and how it turned out, and I hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. Put in your thoughts, and who knows where this will lead. Take care. Bye-bye.